My beloved country, they sing, religious and political freedom are the source of our happiness. They say they'd sing in the middle of the night, then smuggle the tapes out by day. They've reunited in London for the first time since being released. For of us, it's very happy and also same, same thing is sad. Nyo Wang Sang Drawl says she was just 12 years old when she was arrested. And we sheltered free to bed and long lived His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Just these two words, they arrested us and tortured um, using the different of weapons. They had no idea their music would be heard far beyond Tibet's borders. <laughs> From India to the UK to the US, the Free Tibet movement has grown roots on almost every continent and gathered supporters of all ages, races and religions. Many of them are students, almost all are volunteers. Their voices are louder than ever, ahead of what they call the games of shame. As the world spotlight falls on the Beijing Olympics over the next few months, more protests in support of Tibetan freedom will be staged around the globe. It's a deliberate attempt to capture international attention. China has said it wants to keep politics out of the games, but an activist from Free Tibet says that's impossible. Peaceful country, invaded by bully, culture being destroyed, make it stop. Protests this week marked the 49th anniversary of a failed uprising against the Chinese government. The Dalai Lama was forced to flee to India, where he's been living in exile ever since. China defends its rule in Tibet and says it's brought prosperity to the impoverished region. A spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry responded to the protests saying, we will strongly oppose any attempts to split Tibet from China. What you hope to see may never happen. But many others, including these former nuns, vow to continue their campaign. Emily Chang, CNN, London.